There are several motivations for FX transactions. Here are a couple of examples. International trade, capital market transactions in other countries, and so on. You need to understand the distinction between hedging and speculating. Hedging is where we engage in a transaction to reduce or mitigate foreign exchange risk. For example, if you have a importer who at some point in the future needs 50 million euro, let's say that our importer is a United States based company and they will need this much money in euro at some point in the future. The company can engage in a foreign exchange transaction to buy euro on this day at a particular price. This would be a foreign exchange transaction and the intent would be to hedge the risk of the euro becoming too expensive in the future. This is an example of hedging because the company here is hedging its foreign exchange risk. And we'll see examples of this over the next few slides. Speculating or speculation is where a company or an investor takes a position based on a view. If a given investor believes that the Japanese yen will appreciate, he might take a long position in the Japanese yen purely with the intent of benefiting if the yen goes up. That would be an example of speculation. The curriculum points out, however, that at times the distinction between hedging and speculation might be quite blurred. But from an exam perspective, as long as you understand the high level distinction that I have just made, you should be in good shape. Spot transactions. Spot transactions are transactions that happen today. And in fact, the term used with spot transactions is often T plus two. What this means is that an agreement is made today to buy or sell a currency and the settlement happens two days later. For some currencies such as the US dollar, the settlement might be T plus one, which means that the agreement happens today and the settlement happens one day later. Forward contracts are where you agree today on a transaction that will happen in the future. In my speculation example, I effectively talked about a forward contract where at time zero, we are locking in a price for euro. At time zero, we know that we will need 50 million euro, let's say after three months or 90 days. and we are concerned about the fact that the euro will become too expensive. So at time zero, we lock in a price. Let's say that price is 1.400 euro to one dollar. This would be an example of a forward transaction. This amount per euro will be actually paid over here, but the contract or agreement is signed at time zero. This material is also covered in the derivatives section of the curriculum. A related term that is mentioned here in the reading but not mentioned in the learning objectives is a FX swap. And just to be safe, I will describe an FX swap very briefly over here. Let's say that at time zero, we get into a forward contract which expires over here. As we approach this point in time and the original forward contract is about to expire, then if we get into a spot contract or a spot transaction to offset the expiring forward, plus we get into a new forward contract, this combination is called an FX swap. And I'm not going to get into more detail here because, as I mentioned, this is not covered in the learning objectives. Plus, I don't see any examples of practice problems which talk about FX swaps. From an exam point of view, understanding spot rates and forward rates is extremely important. A spot rate effectively is the rate today. 
It's actually t plus 2 to be exact, but for all intents and purposes, it is the exchange rate that is in effect today. And the forward rate, as I mentioned, is a rate which is agreed today for a transaction which will be executed at some point in the future. Now, I want you to read this text. This is example two from the curriculum. And there are several questions that we will go over. Here is the first question. Remember, our client is based in Australia. The client has invested in a bond that is denominated in Hong Kong dollars. And let's say that the client wants to liquidate at the end of one year. From an exchange rate perspective or an exchange rate risk perspective, what is the client concerned about? Is he concerned about today's forward rate, the spot rate one year from now, or the forward rate one year from now? If this is time zero, what the client is concerned about is the spot rate one year from today. He is not concerned about the forward rate today because that is a rate that is known. He can go to the dealer and lock in a forward rate. As far as the forward rate one year from today is concerned, that is completely irrelevant. What concerns him is the exchange rate that will be in effect one year from today. And to be more specific, if he has made an investment in a instrument that is denominated in Hong Kong dollars, then the concern is that the Hong Kong dollar might go down, which means that the value of this investment in Australian terms will be down. Let's look at question two now. To reduce the exchange rate risk of the Hong Kong investment, what should the client do? Again, he's here at time zero. This is time one. His investment is in Hong Kong dollar. To mitigate the risk, what he can do is sell Hong Kong dollars in the forward market. What that means is at time zero, he can lock in a rate at which he will sell Hong Kong dollars. If that rate is locked in here at time zero, then no matter what the spot rate is over here, he will get the rate that is specified in the forward contract. So the correct answer would be C. Then question three. Over a one year horizon, the investment proposed by the investment advisor is most likely and then which of the following. Now you need to go back and quickly look at the investment which has been proposed. Here is what the advisor is recommending. Exchange Australian dollars for Hong Kong dollars. Remember the client is Australian. So the client needs to sell Australian dollars and buy Hong Kong dollars. Then invest the Hong Kong dollars in a risk-free zero coupon one year Hong Kong bond and then use a forward contract. This would be a one year forward contract to sell Hong Kong dollars and buy Australian dollars after one year. This is a risk-free transaction. Notice that in terms of the Hong Kong bond, it is risk-free. So we know exactly how many Hong Kong dollars we are getting at the end of the year. And since at time zero, we are also locking in an exchange rate. That means that there is no exchange rate risk. Since there is no price risk and no exchange rate risk, that means that this investment is risk-free. Next, to set up the investment proposed by the advisor, the client would need to do what? Exchange Australian dollars for Hong Kong dollars. What is happening here is that the client is selling Australian dollars in the spot market. So it is one of these two. And then invest in a risk-free Hong Kong bond. That means that we are going to buy a one-year Hong Kong denominated bond. 
and then use a forward contract. Here we would be selling Hong Kong dollars after one year, which is the same thing as buying Australian dollars in the forward market. So that's this over here. The correct answer is C. And finally, we need to calculate the return on the investment proposed by the investment advisor. Look at the numbers given in the question and come up with an answer before you look at the solution. To solve this problem, let's say that we start with one Australian dollar. Given that the exchange rate is 0.1429 Australian dollars to Hong Kong dollars, this is the spot rate. We can convert one Australian dollar to seven Hong Kong dollars at this spot rate. Seven Hong Kong dollars are then invested at 7%. After one year, we will have 7.49 Hong Kong dollars. And this is the forward rate that we have booked at time zero, which means that at the end of one year, we can convert 7.49 Hong Kong dollars at this rate into 1.05 Australian dollars. We started with one Australian dollar end up with 1.05 Australian dollars, so our return is 5%. Section 2.2 talks about the different players in the FX market. We have a wide range of market participants. At a high level though, we have sell side players and buy side players. On the sell side, we have large FX trading banks such as Deutsche Bank, Citigroup, UBS and HSBC. Other banks or dealers fall into the second and third tier of the FX market. On the buy side, we have several players. Essentially, it is all the clients who use banks to undertake FX transactions. And here are the different kinds of entities. You can read a line or two about each of these entities in the curriculum. This slide illustrates the market size and composition. And essentially, I have reproduced exhibits three and four from the curriculum. Notice that the largest turnover is in the FX swaps market or foreign exchange swaps. The spot market is 36%. You will not be tested on these numbers, just have a general sense that it is a range of transactions that make up the FX market. And in terms of counterparties, most transactions are either interbank or with financial clients. Non-financial clients only are 13% of the, non-financial clients are only 13% of the market. This is now example three from the curriculum. You need to say whether this statement is true or false. Foreign exchange transactions for spot settlement see the most trade volume in terms of average daily turnover because the FX market is primarily focused on settling international trade flows. This is completely wrong. The FX market is not primarily focused on settling international trade flows. In fact, this is a small percentage of the overall FX market. Also, as you see over here, the spot market is only 36%. So this statement about spot settlements seeing the most trade volume is also incorrect. The most important foreign exchange market participants on the buy side are corporations engaged in international trade. Again, if you notice over here, this is a relatively small number, so this is incorrect. On the sell side, they are the local banks that service the FX needs. That is also incorrect because on the sell side, we have the three or four banks that I mentioned, which are the biggest players.